हेलो स्टूडेंट्स नाउ आई विल डिस्कस विद यू क्रोनिक ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव लंग डिजीज वेल दिस इज सी ओ पी डी इज अ कॉमन कंडीशन स्पेशली इन आर कंट्री एंड हियर आई वुड गो इन टू पैथोफिजियोलॉजी और डिटेल्स ऑफ सी ओ पी डी आई विल ओनली डिस्कस विथ यू द एक्सरबेशन ऑफ सी ओ पी डी एंड हाउ डू वी मैनेज द एक्सरबेशन इन आवर इमरजेंसी डिपार्टमेंट सो आई विल मोर फोकस ऑन अ डायग्नोस्ट केस ऑफ सी ओ पी डी राइट एंड हाउ डू वी मैनेज दिस इन वेन दे प्रेजेंट अक्यूटली इन आवर इमरजेंसी डिपार्टमेंट सो वट इज द क्लासिकल प्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ पेशेंट विद सी ओ पी डी एक्सरबेशन दे हैव वीज दे हैव प्रोडक्टिव कफ दे हैव डिसनिया ऑन एक्सर्शन प्रोग्रेसिव डिसनिया ऑन एक्सर्शन एंड दे हैव लेट से टैकीकार्डिया एंड हाइपोक्सिया दे आर हाइपोक्सिक दे हैव इंक्रीज हार्ट रेट दे हैव वीज they have is disney on exertion and they have a productive cuff okay so this is a classically they how they this is how they present patient will give you a history that recently the use of inhalers the routine use of inhalers the inhalers which he use he has increased it the change in the amount or uh, color of the sputum and uh, a new requirement has started in him that he cannot uh, uh, like uh, he cannot s uh, sleep when he is in supine position he has to sleep in upright position because supine position increases his dyspnea however none of these symptoms right are symptoms particular for copd they are so many other causes which can have the same kind of presentation so how do i make the diagnosis that it is exacerbation of copd or it is some other condition some other differential diagnosis right so history is very important in copd patient and some typical physical examination is very important in copd patients though remember that definitive diagnosis of copd is not possible in emergency department okay what are the typical symptoms of copd cough wheeze chest congestion fatigue sputum change in sputum fever chills so these are the typical symptoms cough wheeze chest congestion fatigue right and these are non specific symptoms which can be there in so many other clinical conditions right and all these uh, features which i discussed just now with you all these features which i discussed just now with you the these symptoms may vary from mild to severe so spectrum of symptoms can change from mild to severe the mildly affected patients may note mild dyspnea on exertion and more symptomatic patient may complain mild to severe dyspnea even at rest so the spectrum of disease in from patient to patient vary on severity and management is according to the severity of the patient what is the let's say what is the approach for management in these patients varies some patient presenting with severe dyspnea may immediate require a invasive ventilation some patients presenting with moderate dyspnea may get benefited from bronchodilators steroids etc etc so management differs according to the severity of symptoms okay now causes of acute decompensation whenever we take the history patient says he is a old case of copd is on inhalers and suddenly things have become bad for him his symptoms are increasing right we always should keep in mind to know for a exacerbating factor something which has caused decompensation for in this patient so what can cause the decompensation because we not only have to treat copd the present exacerbated state of copd we also have to treat the cause which has decompensated copd so we have to target the cause also so in history we have to look for the cause so what are the things which can decompensate superimpose infection any superimpose infection can decompensate patient smoking suddenly patient has increased the smoking so it has decompensated the copd then non compliance to the drug his routine drug and inhalers he has he has become non compliant lack of usual medication or oxygen therapy 
राइट स्पॉन्टेनियस नीमोथोरैक्स पेशेंट मे सीओपीडी द ओल्ड स्टैंडिंग सीओपीडी पेशेंट्स मे डेवलप स्पॉन्टेनियस नीमोथोरैक्स सो इन्फेक्शन स्मोकिंग नॉन कंप्लायंस टू द ऑक्सीजन थेरेपी एंड ड्रग्स और नीमोथोरैक्स कैन एक्सर बेट सीओपीडी सो वेन एवर वी डू फिजिकल एग्जामिनेशन वॉट आर द थिंग्स वी हैव टू सी टू अंडरस्टैंड द सीवियरिटी ऑफ द सिचुएशन द फर्स्ट थिंग विच वी नीड टू सी इज वर्क ऑफ ब्रीदिंग हाउ मच दिस द एफर्ट पेशेंट इज टेकिंग टू ब्रीद बिकॉज दिस विल अल्टीमेटली अल्टीमेटली गाइड आवर मैनेजमेंट राइट इफ पेशेंट वर्क ऑफ ब्रीदिंग हैज इमेंसली इंक्रीज पेशेंट विल फैटिंग and patient can go into respiratory arrest so we have to target those patients and maybe we have to prevent the situation by an early intervention in these patients so we have to look for the work of breathing how do i see the work of breathing i have to see it by seeing the accessory muscles of the patient how much the use of accessory muscle we have to look for retraction during respiratory respiration we have to see the effort patient is taking during respiration patient is pursing his lip to take the breath patient is cyanosed that is patient is unable to achieve adequate oxygenation and severity can also be assessed by during physical examination by seeing uh, clubbing of finger etc right so there may be a finger clubbing seen in the patient these are all telling us the severity of copd they are all pointing towards the severity increased use of accessory muscle using pursed lip during breathing clubbing present in the patient right and when we auscultate this patient in auscultation right when we auscultate these patients we can give variety of lung sounds like we can have wheeze wrong eye even rals right or we can have a silent chest so such a wide presentation depending upon the severity severe bronchospasm patient has absent breath sound bilaterally in severe bronchospasm so we may have patient may have silent chest and because of inadequate oxygenation hypoxia and hypercapnia the mental status of patient is also impaired patient's gcs has depressed patients patients gps gcs has glasgow coma scale has depressed so during physical examination i will also assess the mental status these are the patients who may require a early intubation and ventilation right so accordingly the clinical features we have to plan our management now what are the investigations right what are the typical investigations which we have to uh do in these patients are also guided by the physical finding of the patient now apart from apart from features of uh, clinical features of uh, copd uh if the copd is really bad a long standing copd then patient may have developed congestive cardiac failure patient may have developed right side heart failure so during examination we may get elevated jvp we may get peripheral edema seen in the patient hepatomegaly seen seen in the patient they all are pointing towards the severity right severity of the situation of long standing of long standing copd okay okay so how do we start this management in this patient we start the management in this patient by assessing the airway breathing and circulation like any other patient presenting us in the emergency department a uh, copd patient also with exacerbation is assessed in the same way airway breathing and circulation we obtain the vital signs of the patient we attach the pulse oximetry to see the saturation of the patient right and depending upon the requirement of the patient we start our management so we will start mostly we start in this patient with oxygen therapy the oxygen therapy we start with oxygen therapy how do we choose the device by which i will give oxygen to this patient in copd initially always a low flow device is used like a nasal cannula or venturi mask because remember copd the respiratory drive is dependent upon their 
हाइपर कैपनिक स्टेट सो इफ आई यूज अ हाई फ्लो डिवाइस एंड वॉश आउट कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड देर इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी दैट द सेंट्रल रेस्पिरेटरी ड्राइव ऑफ द पेशेंट विल गेट ऑपटेंडेड राइट सो इनिशियली वी यूज अ लो फ्लो डिवाइस लाइक वेंचुरी मास्क और नेजल कैनला वी एवॉइड यूजिंग हाई फ्लो डिवाइस राइट अनलेस एंड अंटिल inspiratory flow right of the patient is very low and patient is not responding to the low flow devices right so they are dependent upon hypercapnia for their respiratory drive so a very quick reduction of co2 can be deleterious in these patients now number of these patients number of these patients may not benefit with oxygen simple simply with oxygen remember one thing they are the patient in whom you assess and manage do the management according to their requirement you do a continuous assessment and management and you do a reassessment and you change your management accordingly so management is dependent upon whether the patient is improving from your previous intervention or not so number of time we attach oxygen and observe for the improvement in the patient if patient is not improving with one device we can change it to the other device and maybe patient may require a non invasive ventilation a non invasive ventilate ventilatory support or a invasive ventilatory support we may need to intubate our patient we may need to put the patient on niv on ventilator non invasive ventilation always we start with non invasive we put a mask strap the mask attach the patient to the ventilator and give a positive pressure ventilation through a non invasive mask if patient is deteriorating even with that then only we go, we go for invasive ventilation we go for invasive ventilation okay okay so so remember a quick decision should be is very necessary on what therapy would be best for the patients right so quick decisive therapy based on initial clinical assessment will yield the best outcome in these patient now diagnosis is mostly most probably on typical signs and symptoms right and focused on supportive and exclusion criteria other things for other dds are excluded right and confirmatory Uh, confirmation confirmatory test not possible confirmatory test is pulmonary function test spirometry test not possible in emergency department not in acute exacerbated state of copd so i cannot 100% confirm that patient is a patient of copd but based on his clinical symptoms and physical examination he is most probably an exacerbated case of copd and we manage on that line only patient improve right patient will definitely improve okay uh, generally the patients who present with copd exacerbated state of copd are uh, older patient with a history of smoking multiple comorbidities right so they have a broad uh, broad differential diagnosis they have a broad differential diagnosis right and we need we need multiple investigation in these patients right so that we rule out the other cases right so most serious they may have a disease of most serious other other uh, other uh, conditions presenting to emergency department so what are the disease in these patients right what are the disease in these patients who come us come to us with breathlessness it can be congestive heart failure it can be acute coronary syndrome it can be pulmonary embolus pneumothorax pericardial effusion pneumonia all these conditions can masquerade the signs and symptoms of acute copd exacerbation so all these can be a differential diagnosis of exacerbated state of copd so how do i rule out these condition right how do i do like rule out these conditions there are few investigations which we can do though none are diagnostic chest x ray ecg a bnp can be done to distinguish whether 
the dyspnea is because of lung condition or because of heart condition abg serial abg may be required and cardiac markers may be necessary so what is a typical finding in chest x ray of copd patient chest x ray is one of the most common investigation done in evaluating copd patient and there are some typical findings there is increased ap diameter in chest x ray the anterior posterior diameter would increase there would there may be possibility of flattening of diaphragm typical copd lung we will get decreased pulmonary pulmonary vascular marking lung markings would decrease and in absence of another acute abnormalities such as new uh, absence of other acute abnormalities like pneumothorax pulmonary edema infiltrates can also be ruled out by chest x ray right even pneumothorax everything can be ruled out by chest x ray which would be evident in chest x ray so if in chest x ray i am seeing a pneumothorax my management would change in the term in in the direction of pneumothorax so chest x ray is really helpful because lot of other dds of acute exacerbation of copd can also be diagnosed by chest x ray okay ecg is insignificant but the important thing is that uh since this patient is a typically uh, they are typically old patients with a uh, lot of other comorbidities so ecg can help in ruling out the other causes which can present like this right ecg is very helpful in ruling out the st elevated mi which can present like this a acute is can it can show it can also rule out acute coronary syndrome other other acute coronary syndromes in ecg in uh, what would be a typical ecg finding in uh, copd patients there are some typical ecg copd uh, ecg finding in copd patient one typical finding which is very typical for copd patient in ecg is multifocal atrial tachycardia very commonly seen in copd patient multifocal atrial tachycardia so what are the common ecg findings in copd patient they have a low voltage ecg right axis deviation and right axis deviation p pulmonary may be there peaked p wave in tooth in lead 2 3 avf right atrial hypertrophy because of of right sided heart failure tachycardia multifocal atrial tachycardia i talked about this multifocal atrial tachycardia rarely present but if present typical for copd patient specific for copd patient right so there is only one finding in ecg which is specific for copd is multi focal atrial tachycardia other are non specific findings would not much help in diagnosis but ecg is important in these patients to rule out other causes which can present like a acute exacerbation of copd namely acute coronary syndrome okay we always have to obtain a abg in these patient very essential because abg would help us in managing evaluating the degree of hypoxia acidosis and hypercapnia and eventually in deciding our therapy in these patients not only a single abg may be required we may need serial abg and accordingly our management will vary so what do we do in this patient what do we do in what is the definitive management of this patient we always start with bronchodilators we always start with short acting bronchodilators we always start with short acting bronchodilators like albuterol right this is the preferred beta agonist which provide the most rapid response and we go on giving this albuterol uh, albuterol nebulization to the patient we give we nebulize the patient with albuterol we give multiple doses then eventually a clinical response may come so it is not that we gave albuterol we we wait again for some time 
we can continuously go on nebulizing the patient with a short acting beta beta blocker like beta a sorry beta agonist like albuterol and until and unless we go on giving it to the patient until and unless the response comes so after oxygen the most important thing in the treatment of copd patient is bronchodilator and the most important bronchodilator is albuterol a short acting bronchodilator ultra short acting rather beta agonist a preferred bronchodilator which is continuously given till the response come the only problem is since it is beta agonist the only limiting factor is these old patient that it will produce tachycardia and etc which can cause ischemia cardiac ischemia etc the heart the uh, cardiac workload will increase because of tachycardia etc so ischemia etc can get precipitated so that is why we have to be very cautious because we don't want even to tachycardia develop in these patients but bronchodilator is the first line of management then we can go for uh anticholinergic bronchodilator like ipratropium bromide ipratropium bromide is also the first line of management but unlike a beta agonist ipratropium brom uh, bromide is not given continuously inhaled ipratropium bromide is given every 4 hourly right and number of places number of places they use beta blocker uh, sorry beta agonist and ipratropium brom uh, bronchobromide together for the response but studies have not shown any benefit of combining these two right but people are using even combining these two so, uh, the, there are uh, preparations available of com of combined preparation available for of these two also so very important you have to go for short acting beta agonist and every 4 hourly we have to go for anticholinergic bronchodilator like ipratropium bromide now another very good drug important drug in acute exacerbation of uh, copd is steroid steroid is very helpful and patients are started with iv steroids like methyl prednisolone or prednisolone right this will try to control the inflammatory component and optimum regimen is not established is still not established for how long you have to give steroid but 10 14 days steroid is given and then it is tapered which is unlike bronchial asthma in which normally 4 5 days steroid is given right but in copd exacerbated state of copd steroid is given for 10 14 days and then it is tapered many end stage copd are totally steroid dependent and corticosteroid has shown to reduce the treatment failure in this patient so steroid is important so mostly in acute exacerbated state steroid is started but we always have to be careful for the complications of steroid since they are old patient they may be diabetic the sugar control can get impaired their hypertension can get worsened gastritis can happen steroid psychosis can happen in them so we have to be always in keep keep in mind for all these side effects of steroid when we are giving steroid to these patients okay then other the important stay in management is antibiotics empiric antibiotics is started because infection is one of the most important cause for exacerbation of copd so antibiotic is started right in spite of bronchodilator in spite of ipratropium bromide in spite of steroid and antibiotic if patient is not improving then what we have to do patient has continuing patient is going into respiratory decompensation with co2 more and more copd co2 retention in spite of all medical treatment then we have no other option than to go for initially for non invasive positive pressure ventilation or invasive positive pressure ventilation right so the decision to initiate one of those adjunctive therapy that is ventilation either by non invasive or invasive mode is based on overall assessment of work of breathing and not responding to the 
treatment. There is no such guideline at what PCO2 you will start ventilation, non-invasive or invasive, whatever. There is no such gu guideline. It is simply based on the exacerbation of the clinical symptoms and response of the patient on uh, drug management. If patient is clinical symptoms are getting worsened, patient is not improving on medical management, then we have to take a decision and have to go for ventilation, right? Non-invasive positive pressure ventilation is a mode of mechanical ventilation given by face mask and that aids in oxygen delivery and decreases work of breathing. Now, it is next logical step if the patient is not responding to standard therapy, right? So, whenever I put my patient <coughs> on non-invasive positive pressure ventilation, what is my target and why I have started? I have started this because of progressive worsening of the patient. So, my target is to correct acidosis, right? Because of CO2 retention, respiratory patient is in respiratory acidosis, correct hypoxia and we have to avoid high peak and plateau airway pressure, right? We have to ventilate the patient, right? And we also have to continue with medical management, right? We also have to continue with medical management in these patients. We have to go on using bronchodilators, etc. also. Intermittently, we have to give non-invasive ventilation and use bronchodilator in these patients, right? Because they, because of bronchoconstriction and other problems, they have a very high peak pressure and plateau pressure, which again would make the ventilation very difficult in these patients. Plus, there is stacking of the breath in these patients, right? There is stacking of the breath. Whenever we do the ventilator setting in these patients, the expiratory, expiratory phase of the respiratory cycle is kept bit prolonged, right? It is kept bit prolonged to give more time for the expiration to happen, right? So, this helps the patient during ventilation. Okay. So, this, these are the management of acute exacerbation of COPD. Now, how do I dispose this patient? How do I dispose this patient? Now, ultimate disposition of this patient depends upon the clinical, it depends upon clinical decision and based and it depends upon the work of breathing, social support of the patient and what is on how much improvement we got in the patient. Well, after my medical management, if patient has improved, patient can walk around, can carry out his normal activity, patient is not desaturating significantly or becoming too dysnic, right? Not becoming too dysnic, right? Can be discharged, can be discharged to whom? Patient who does desaturate significantly or become too dysnic, right? To, for complete ambulation. When we ask the patient to start walk around, they are becoming dysnic or start desaturating, right? Then these kind of patients cannot be, cannot be discharged. Remember, mild to moderate, mild to moderate uh, exacerbation of COPD after initial stabilization in emergency department are disposed to wards for further management. Severe COPD patients, severe exacerbated COPD patients who require non-invasive ventilation or invasive ventilation are disposed to intensive care unit for further management. So, emergency department physician has to do initial management, has to see the in initial investigations and ultimately dispose the patient according to the severity of his symptoms. Okay, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.